Hello, my name is Andy. I'm with Simplex, and today we're going to talk about how to identify and replace a load resistor on your Simplex load bank. I'll be showing this to you on our Simplex Neptune. This is a 255 kW load bank, one power factor, which means this is a pure resistive load bank. Now, first, we're going to remove all load power and control power. We're going to open our cabinet to grab our drawings. Now, from the drawings, we can identify which step is bad and which uh, elements are related to that load step. I'm coming around the side. We can take a look at the resistor trays. You can see here we have four sets of trays. And then on our top tray and bottom tray, we are using jumpers, these brass jumpers. And you see here there's three sets of jumpers which are jumping each resistor to the resistor next to it. Let's go around to the other side to see what we have over there. All right, we can see on this side that we have all our load wires. You see they go right in order, phase A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. What we're gonna do is check with our multimeter the continuity from phase A to B, A to C, and B to C. We should have even resistance across all three phases. So we're just on continuity. We have 459 ohms, 459, and 459. This shows us that all three of these elements are good and we don't have any open resistors. All right, now that we've gone through and tested our individual resistors, we can start with removing our load wires. We need to verify that we have labels on all of our wires before unscrewing them from the resistors themselves. We're gonna use a 3 a nut driver All right, now that we have all our nuts removed, we can pull the wires back. Just like that. Next step we're gonna do is removing all of our Phillips mounting screws for the tray itself. There's two locking brackets, one on the bottom and one on top, and two on the sides. One side here, and let's see. Once we remove all these screws and brackets, we're gonna repeat this process on the opposite side. All right, now that we have all our bolts off and our brackets removed, we're ready to pull the tray out of the load bank. We have all our wires folded back so nothing's gonna get caught. I have my assistant Brian on the opposite side. He's gonna push while I'm gonna pull. He's gonna pass the tray off to me. We're gonna pull it out nice and even, slow. I'm going to set it on these side works we pulled out earlier. Now that our tray is removed from the load bank, we can remove the hardware from the broken resistor. I'm going to take my 3 8 nut driver to our uh, nut contact here. Remove the nut, remove the washer. Now on this side of the tray, I'm going to have to Loosen this nut too because of having that brass jumper on there. I'm just going to loosen it up and swing my brass jumper down for now. You can see there's another nut behind it. Remove that. I'm going to remove this square porcelain and the round porcelain from the inside of the tray. And you can see that our resistor is now free on this side. We're gonna repeat this on the opposite side. All right, now that we can start removing the rod itself that holds the resistor in place, we're gonna take our 5 16 nut driver and remove both nuts on the double nutted rod. We have to do just one at a time 
In some cases, it'll be easiest to have two people, one person holding the rod on the opposite side of the tray, and one person on this side, unnutting the rod. We're gonna take the nuts off the opposite side of the rod. We're gonna remove the porcelain locks here. And on this side, here we can pull the whole resistor out. And here we have it, removing our bad resistor. Once we have a replacement resistor, we're ready to install it back into our resistor tray. We're going to start with grabbing the rod, slide it in, just like we pulled it out. We're going to reinstall our porcelain stops on both sides. And take our two nuts and screw those back on. All right, now we're ready to put the resistor blocks back in. Take the round circle porcelain, set from the inside, going out. We're going to take the end of our resistor, the threaded rod on. It's going to go through the round of porcelain. Then we're going to take our square block, set it on the outside, just like this. From here we're going to grab our flat washer. Put the line in there, put the nut on, the radius nut driver, we're going to tighten it down. Now remember this is porcelain so it, it will crack, you don't need to really crank on it, just, just get it tight. We're going to put our brass jumper back into place, our lock washer. And the nut. Tighten those back down. And we're going to repeat this process for the opposite side of the tray. Alright, now that we have our new resistor into our tray, we're ready to reinstall our tray back into our load bank. So we can go in the same way it came out. Slide it back. Reinstall our brackets. I like to start with my side brackets, then move on to my stop brackets on the bottom and top. Once we get our tray bolted back into place, we're ready to reinstall our load wires. They should fold back to where you pull them off. And here we can verify we have black, red, blue, black, red, blue, black, red, blue, indicating that all these are back into place. All right, now that we have our wires back installed, we're ready to run our equipment. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like it, leave a comment below.